monsters. Rock monsters. Bigfoot. Prehistoric beasts. They all have one thing in common. They're long-standing stories and discoveries that continue to captivate man's imagination. Where do these stories originate? Storytelling has always been a, a large part of Aboriginal culture. Their beliefs and their legends precede modern-day folklore and, and tales. These legends are often disputed between the believers and the non-believers. The story is right. Explore with us. Discover. Red Earth. Uncovered. Love. A great story. It reminds me when I'm, well, maybe not so much as I was a puppoos, but just a little bigger than a puppoos. Huh? This story dates back to 1941 when Sasquatch made his appearance to a local family named the Chapmans, George, Jeannie, and their three children. Mr. Chapman worked on the railroad and they lived in a small little place called Ruby Creek, about nine miles away from St. Alice's Well, today called Harrison Hot Springs. It was a mid-afternoon on a sunny, cloudless day when Jeannie Chapman's nine-year-old son came running into the house saying that there was a cow coming down out of the woods at the foot of the nearby mountain. The other younger Chapman kids were playing in a field behind the house next to the rail track. Mrs. Chapman went out to look since her boy seemed oddly disturbed. Together, they saw what she first thought was a large bear moving through the bushes just beyond the tracks. She called her two young children who came running immediately. And then the creature moved onto the tracks and she saw a, a giant man covered with hair, not fur. The hair was a pale yellow brown color that was about four inches long. This creature advanced directly towards the house and Mrs. Chapman told her oldest son to get a blanket from behind the house. The creature was only a hundred feet away. She opened the blanket up and held it in front of her kids so they could not see the creature, nor could it see them. Mrs. Chapman and her kids ran through the old field, down to the river and continued downstream to the village. Judging by the various fence and line posts standing about the field, Mrs. Chapman estimated the height of the creature to be about seven and a half feet tall. It had a small head and a very short, thick neck. In fact, really no neck at all. Its body was entirely human in shape, except that it was extremely thick through the chest and exceptionally long arms and wide shoulders. She did not see the feet which were in the grass. The naked parts of its face and hands were much darker than its hair. George Chapman returned home from work that evening to see the woodshed door battered in and enormous footprints all over his yard. He called for his family and then ran through the house. He then saw footprints of his wife and kids going off towards the river, relieved to know that the tracks of his family had gone off downstream to the village. George Chapman returned to his house and examined the woodshed. A 55 gallon barrel of salt fish was broken into and its contents were scattered everywhere. George Chapman then went off to the village and found his family. The footprints returned every night for a week. And so the Chapmans moved out and they never came back. Next time on Red Earth Uncovered. Thank you.